All right, welcome to today's Ty Lopez Show. I have a very special guest. Uh, he is the independent vice chairman of Deloitte. He is bestseller. If you have not read this book, you haven't been checking my books list because his book on disruption, I mean, really, you're maybe the world expert on disruption, disruptive uh, innovation industries, innovations, you teach at USC, you were on Lifestyle Rich and Famous when you were young because you had, what, six video games? At one point I had seven of the top ten best-selling video games, but that was many decades ago. And that got you on Lifestyle of Rich and Famous? Yeah, well, if you think nowadays everyone wants to know the, the crypto billionaires or the dot-com billionaires, the mobile, right. well, we were the first generation putting PCs out there. And you were part of that. Yeah, you were I was the first guy to put video on a computer. I started on the internet before people knew what the internet was. Yeah. I'm old. What year was that? 1978. Wow. College. Wait, let's talk about that for a second. What was the internet in 1978? Was it military or something? So it was, it was DARPA. And, and what it was is the big universities, yes. UCLA, where I went, connected to each other so that government guys could figure out how to make bombs. But okay. you're a college kid, and you yeah. don't care about any of that. And you have to hook up to another college kid who understands computers at another campus. So what did we do? We, there were no screens back then. You would type jokes to each other. Yeah. You know, you would talk. Same thing we do today. So, so it hasn't changed since the 70s. I had that advantage of understanding what a networked world could be. Right. So by the time I started saying computers should have video, I thought it would happen in the 1980s. It took, you know, decades, right? Yeah. Um, when you're young, you don't understand the timing things take. And... When I had my first business and everything, I literally thought every home in America would have a PC. So you were ahead of time because they didn't think that at first. But it IBM thought they'd sell a few thousand. And so, and it's up on YouTube. When you watch this old lifestyle piece, I'm talking about like all this great stuff that seems obvious for computers. Yeah. And then they give the stat. There are now worldwide 10 million PCs. And I'm like, what an idiot I was to think that my business would succeed, right? Huh. You know, that's a very small number of things. But the world happened to go where I am. But I've spent my career learning and looking at how you pick the next trend, Yes. where the money's going, and here's the basic rule. If you go into any field that exists today, pick whatever you want. You're gonna open a dry cleaner, you're gonna open a restaurant, you're, you're gonna start the next giant oil company. You already have competitors. Okay. People have been there decades or 100 years. Yeah. If you're going to go into the next new thing, Augmented reality, who controls that market? Yeah, that's what we're going to talk about today. This you know, trillion dollar potential you know, industry. It, then there's no competition. Right. So then you pick and stake your claim of this is what you're going to be the world expert at. Yeah. You know, uh, my buddy Brock Pierce sat me down when Bitcoin was in the pennies under a dollar and said, this is what the future's going to be. Do you wish you had listened to him and bought up all you could at 60 cents? Of course I wish I would have listened. And every time it hits another thousand, I thank him because I did listen. So you just, got in relatively early. I was slow. Yeah. Um, but the whole thing is, it's so easy to go and do that. And here's the fun fact. Every month there's a new self-made billionaire in their yeah. 20s or 30s. They didn't go to the right schools. They didn't come from the right families. They have the same 24 hours in a day that you and I and the listeners have but they're doing something different with it. Yeah. They're looking at how the world changes and how to seize an opportunity from that change. Yeah. So for me, when I looked at the world and I get bored by doing the same old, I looked at what augmented reality is going to be. And for those that, that don't know the definition, poke, it's more than Pokemon Go. Imagine your glasses. So right now in 2017, Americans bought 85 million pairs of glasses okay. for over $100. Yep. And all that they do Just is... Just not the Snapchat ones that are rotting in right. a Right, no, I'm talking glasses. Yeah. yeah. And all that they do is focus. Okay. So if that same pair of glasses would translate any street sign, you're, you're in Paris, you're in Cambodia, into English, mm. and it was the same price, which would you buy? Oh, yeah, for sure. And there's glasses today that you pay a little more to have polarizing. So, you know, you go outside and it's sunglass or anti-glare, right? Yeah. So now we're talking about that you're going to have heads-up display. So this is like Star Trek. You're going to be able to scan a person's face, you think, and know well, their background? Well, They're that's already available. So, so facial recognition, um, you can now look. You meet a ton of people. They all remember Ty, and you look like a jerk if you don't remember them. Right. But now you can walk in any convention, anywhere, and go, hey, Jay, how's Disrupt you doing? And hopefully do that more sincerely. 
Um, <laughs> not, not pretend but, like you're looking up. But like just that. as Facebook can recognize people's faces in your photos, right? You'll have that cognition. But it goes beyond that. So, ten years ago, let's go back in the wayback machine. Woo! Ten years ago, before the iPhone came out, yeah. If somebody told you in the future you would stare at your phone for three hours a day, that's the U.S. average. That's the average three hours. I know you some would have said more. What, did I have a stroke? I mean, why would I stare at a phone for three hours? Because 10 years ago, a phone was something you dialed. Yeah. And then you talked to somebody. But could you go back to not having a smartphone in your life? No, people have withdrawal. Okay. Google had the best business model in the world. Okay, desktop, own the ad thing. Had Google not gone into mobile, where would they be today? Yeah, they would have been left behind like Microsoft with so, the internet. So they didn't invent Android. Mm -hmm. Back to my thing about self-made thing, when they realized, uh-oh, train left the station, we got to play catch up, they would have bought Android, in my opinion, for any price. Yeah. Whatever price they paid turned out to be cheap, and it was billions, right? Yeah. Because now they and Facebook together do 84% of all advertising outside of China. Yeah. Right? That's huge. Yeah, they have a dominant now, monopoly almost. Now if I tell you that you're going to have a pair of glasses, and all your ads, all your interactions are going to happen through here. How many of the big boys can afford not to be there? Right. And why they're fighting, and I always visualize, my son makes fun of me, I always use the term 800 pound gorilla because I love King Kong. You know, when the giant companies are all fighting over that turf, and if you think of the giant dinosaurs fighting for turf, they didn't notice the little mammals that came along right. like here or there. You're a mammal. You can go in there and find an area that nobody's focused on. Yeah. A friend of mine's company uh, sold this morning Shazam to Apple for 400 million, okay? So, okay, Shazam, the, the music recognition the music app. Yeah. Let me take you back of how long he had the vision zone. 17 years ago, in the year 2000, I'm in London, and he wants to show me this new technology. He says, gotta meet, meet me at a pub. So I go over to the pub. The noises can be tons of people. There's slight background radio playing or whatever. Takes out his phone, and it says the name of the song. Huh. I wasn't impressed. I thought it was a carnage trick. So I said, I gotta show you something even better. He goes, what? Come with me. There's a lot of pubs in London. We go across the street to a different pub, different noise level, different song playing. I go, now do your demo. Because I, I was for sure that he gave like, you know. Gave him 20 bucks. 20, to 20 pounds to, to, the, to, to, to the bartender <laughs> when I walk in and play the song. And when it identified the song, my jaw dropped. Huh. Now, how do you monetize that? Right. So augmented is that opportunity. So, but you think it's bigger than 400 million. You think it's oh, trillion. Uh, it, 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 I don't think it. All the leading stats and, and studies out there, and I can send you decks on it if anybody wants or, or, or search any of my, my, my articles that I write for uh, Fortune. It's, it's been estimated as a trillion dollar opportunity. It is the fourth transformation. If the PC changed the world, and yes. I was lucky to get in the ground floor of that, and then the web changed the world, and nobody's going to disagree with that. And then mobile changed the world and yeah. put us all one click away from six billion consumers, yeah. which is what you preach to everybody. Yeah. And I have to be right for a nanosecond to become exactly. rich, okay? Yeah. This is exponentially bigger. You think it's as big as all those combined? Because all those feed into it with some other new exponential technologies, AI to figure out stuff. So right now, when you want to find new information, yeah. you search it out, you type into Google. You can't imagine life pre-Google. Let me describe life post that. If my glasses know where I am, mm -hmm. everything about me in the past, and why I'm at the store, they're going to give me information that will help me, or anywhere in life. So for example, I come from the doctor. Mm -hmm. the doctor says, Jay, you have diabetes. You gotta watch what you eat. I'm like, oh, okay, but now you go to the supermarket, there's 40,000 SKUs. Am I gonna pick up every box? Uh, so you can program the glasses. No, you don't just, have yeah, to program. Look, you just okay. say, show me the products I can eat. Yeah. Or you're on the paleo diet. Show me the paleo or gluten-free or halal or kosher, whatever you want to do. So suddenly, it's not just about adding to the environment. It's about subtracting. Yeah. Now, if there's a piece of software that controls what brands and products you see and buy, right. how valuable is that? Right. And what other opportunities? So the opportunities you come in, kind of like in the gold rush in California, it's not just the gold, it's also owning the, the shovels, the, the store that sells shovels that's, and the hotel. That's and the, who made and the, the big bar. money. Yeah. Well, what, what, what I'm wearing right now is proof of that. Yeah. The miners had a rough life digging in dirt and everything, and the guys took tent material and made pants out of it. Is that where Levi jeans His name was Levi Strauss. 
and he huh. put rivets in the pocket because they were putting gold rocks in their pockets. Huh. How many other people from the gold mine can you still remember and how many companies right. did they create that are still around? So this is that size opportunity. And I can go on and on. So at, at Deloitte, we're working with large corporations of how this will change training, how this will change overnight package. I'll give you a simple one. You sit on a plane and they have those big metal containers that they slide under that you see, those big yeah. curved aluminum things. They're filled with overnight packages. Okay. It's a bunch of people whose jobs are to throw in the packages. High turnover job, not a fun job. If you're good at it, you get 30% more stuff in there, which is another way of saying if you don't have that 30% empty, one right. out of three planes don't have to fly, two billion in jet fuel. If you could go to CEO and say, with magic AR glasses, I can save you two billion dollars a year that goes straight to profit without one new package, one new customer. Would you listen? Yeah, for sure. Here's how. Now this can identify the shape of the package and look at the what's left and it becomes uh, 3D Tetris. So this is Tetris. Zach here, my buddy's username on Hotmail is Tetris God. So imagine that you're gonna be cheating. Imagine that your job is Tetris. If you are better at packing, you yeah. make more money on your shift. Are you now motivated as an employer? Are you right. enjoying your job? Let's turn on. If you're spatially not so good at it, the glasses why don't you get do a new job. You. Or get right. a new job. Right. Now, <laughs> that's one application. We're doing stuff with fast food restaurants, with with uh, hospitality with safety, with orgasm. Security, this could be huge. Oh, security, so back to your face. At the TSA. You're walking around the airport and they're a client and you see that. There's also software that can tell the gait of a person, how they walk, if they're up to no good. Really? So it can so identify people. So there's a people. certain way, yeah. In certain countries that are worried about an e e Ebola or something going on. Yes. You can also see everybody's body temperature. Huh. Somebody with a fever and quarantine them before they come into the country. Let, let me stop you one second because this brings up an important point. Uh, my cousin told me about, there's a show, Black Magic, I think it's called, and they had an episode. Black Mirror. Black, Black. Black Mirror, sorry, where everybody is ranked, okay? And so you meet somebody, it's like an Uber score. You're like, oh, Zach, he's only a three star. I don't want to hang out with him. He, he tries to talk to me. Do you think that this is going to usher in, if we look at people and go, that person's hot, you know, they're, they're flu, they have a flu, let's not hang out with them. Is this gonna bring up medical ethical issues? So, you know? so there's a lot of privacy and those things will be worked out country by country and whatever. So let's put that in a box. Let's think of opportunity and then you can start thinking right. about how, how, to, how to match reality. You have some experience in, in, in monetizing dating, correct, mm -hmm. in the past? Right. So now, if I had a certain profile, you know, the, the Tinder-esque type thing that I was interested in X, Y, and Z, Right. And I'm at a bar or a concert and I'm wearing these glasses and it'll highlight anybody that agreed to those same terms. Right. And only the two of us know it. Right. Yeah. I see I, I see this halo above this woman and she sees one above me and we go, hey, right? Yeah. Is that a business? Tinder for sure. Okay. Tinder goggle. But the co founder of Tinder was just at my house. I gotta tell him about it. I'll take this. it one one step further and Google just announced this with, with earbuds that, that excite me, but the glasses can also talk to you and they can talk to you silently. There's there's um, called bone induction where this being against your head, okay. you can hear without blocking uh, your ears. Okay? okay. So Google has earbuds now that translate anything in forty languages. Imagine now that you're going on that that life trip to Nepal that you've always wanted. And there at the bar is the future love of your life, yeah. okay? You travel with two pair of glasses. You put them on her, and you, the two of you can look face to face and understand each other no matter what language the two of you speak. Yeah. How life-changing is that? It's just one app. It's almost gonna make language irrelevant. Well, what it'll do hopefully is make miscommunication and the fear of others and, and make our world a better place. Yeah. So these big obvious ones, there's people that are gonna spend a ton of money and have a head start. But everybody listening here has their own path in life. Yeah. They have an experience that, that the student at Stanford and the VC in Silicon Valley doesn't have. Yes. A farm perspective, a small town perspective, of any industry. And there's some way to apply this just as people applied the phone to it. Yes. That's where there's opportunity. You're building on the back of people investing billions of dollars to make augmented reality glasses. And many of these things can be done with a tablet or phone today. You can do augmented reality. It's not as natural because you don't want to walk around the supermarket right, like this. Up, yeah. um, but for some applications you would. Yeah. 
And for some specific fields we're working with, I'll, I'll just give you one because it's on top of my mind right now, of utility line workers, people to keep the electricity working in this country, mm -hmm. half of them will retire in the next five years because of the age of what happened in that industry, which basically means keeping our electrical grid working in this country is in jeopardy. Okay. How do you train enough people? Well, training takes a lot of time, and training typically has two fatal flaws. By the time I give you information that's out of date, right. and no trainee has 100% recognition of what they learned. Yeah. I don't care what the field is. But if a heads-up display can now guide me through stuff, and when I hit the exception, the glasses also have what's called see what I see. So I go out to the field, I've learned how to do 80% of my job installing a cable box, fixing a telco, any repair that you think out there. But then I come across the transformer from 1982. I don't, I don't know that. But Ralph back at the office does. Right, you tap it and boom. Ralph, instead of having to roll a second truck in one of our clients, this is a million dollar a day problem that they're facing today in rolling second trucks around the US. Ralph can just sit in his nice air conditioned crib. He could even be retired. and go, oh yeah, I know what that is. He sees what you're doing, tells you what to do, guides you through it, and the AI system or the machine learning system records that and updates the training so the next person sees that problem, yeah. the knowledge is there. Your knowledge stays here. So we just yes. have to learn how to use our heads-up display. The knowledge doesn't leave when an employee leaves. Yeah. The world fundamentally changes. Fire. We just had these huge fires in San Diego. First yeah. responders to have the ability, to, like you said, to patch an expert in. Like, how do you think this fire is moving? I'm on the ground, this is what I see. Or let somebody instantly see an electrical line. I can't tell you how many first responders died from that. Yes. And the system being able to recognize that and know which lines to shut off. Um, I, I learned this and this terrified me, so I'll, I'll leave out the details of company stuff, but gas lines, you know, natural gas that goes into high-rise buildings like in New York and whatever. Yes. Those lines are plastic PVC and they're welded together by a little bead of heating up the plastic thing. Okay. And the safety concern is they want to make sure if there's the slightest hole, gas comes out, and every once in a while you see one of these four or five story buildings just blows up and people die. Yes. So the technology today that's being used is, they're so worried about this, the three people have to look at that and say, yeah, it looks good. Huh. With their eyes. Yes. It's a black pipe with melted black pipe on it. Your glasses could look at it and know for sure and see through it. Yes. First responders with augmented can be tied into the building plan of the building. And if there's smoke, they'll know, they'll see a grid, just like you're playing a video game, of where the hallways are and where yes. to go and how to, how to get to whatever you need to do. If you're working in a street, where to dig up, you can look at the street like Superman and see where there's cables running and where there's, there's other things that you shouldn't dig into because you can tie and feed into the plans. Yeah. So there are so many problems that suddenly get solved because some... Thousands of people invented a new interface for life. Yes. And as I said, it's not just about adding to the environment. It's also about subtracting. My other example. Helping you make decisions by removing a world that has too many options, the right. paradox of choice. Right. Um, my, my fun example is, and Google Lens now does this, they're now identifying objects by seeing them. And they can understand by context why you want to know. So you and I are hiking through the rainforest of Costa Rica, beautiful. A viper comes down and bites me on the hand. I do not want my glasses to tell me the Latin name of the viper. <laughs> There's pretty much one right. thing I want to know. How to, how to get some anti-venom. Is it poisonous? Right. Okay. So it says, no, it's not poisonous. My stress level just went down tremendously. Yeah. Or it says, you have five minutes to live. What who would, would you, you like, like to call? Your, yeah, what's your will? Who would you like to call? <laughs> Leave your, update your will. But these are serious issues. So. The big change of this fourth transformation is we will always have access to all mankind's knowledge up until that moment. Yes. To bring to bear and help us make the best decision in that moment. And as we get into self-driving cars, it's the same thing. We're not staring out the windshield anymore. What are we doing? You've been in your car for four hours. The system knows where you've eaten, what type of food you like. We'll say that it's, it's hamburgers for the sake of argument. 1,600 feet ahead is a hamburger place. Yes. They know from the CRM and say, hey, Ty, would you like free fries? Say yes. And the car suddenly will drive through their drive through So that's what CRM. and retail. I mean, it's, so basically the reason this is a trillion dollar industry is because it's going to disrupt 
every single industry. Yeah. And what I talk and about every is I teach people in the book how to figure out how to disrupt industries and profit from it. Yes. And, and, and retain that value. So, and by the way, if you're listening, the link tylopez.com slash disrupt, that will forward you to Jay's stuff, his book, tylopez.com slash disrupt. I highly recommend you. This is one of the, the first books that I actually recommended. You've got the forward by Reed Hoffman, who's the founder of LinkedIn. And uh, that's a good forward. Yeah, no, Reed was fun to work with and he's a good friend and, and the smartest human being I've ever met. Is he really? Yeah, and for anybody that, that's made it this far in, into the interview, there's a companion workbook to give you exercises to start expanding your brain of how to do. It's free, it's for me, it's 40 pages. Just go to jsamit.com, J-A-Y-S-A-M-I-T.com and I'll send it right to you so you can get started on this process right away today. But I can't tell you how many opportunities. So mom and pop shops at retail and the malls all got decimated because online you can have endless inventory yes. and a shop can only fit so many things. Yeah. Now the shop can have virtual inventory. Right, things that can't shelves fit. that go on forever. Will people use this phone in the same way just going around and saying, like right now I point it and say, you know, type in blah, 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 Google. Um, is it the same thing going to happen? So the, or it, will people only exclusively be using glasses? So the phone will be in your pocket and will be powering the glasses. You don't need all the weight of the battery and the processing and everything, just as you have wireless Bluetooth today okay. for an earpiece. So you're not going away with the phone, but the interface of life, and this is for the designers. Here's, you know, there's that which I know and that which I'm fascinated with people that think differently than me. Uh. For all of mankind's existence, going back to the caves, everything that we've ever learned from has been within a frame. The Mona Lisa's in a frame, a mm -hmm. newspaper's a frame, a, a magazine, your desktop, your phone. You can understand how to interact with that frame. What is the UI and UX for ubiquitous knowledge in right. our forefront? Do I grab, do I pinch, do I wink, do I, you know? That's being worked out differently by blink, maybe different apps. special slow blink. There is or blink something. that you can do. Um, one of the one of the, the, the programs that we did for for a client uh, uses uh, stare. If you stare at something for longer than a certain period of time, okay. it knows that you're saying yes to it. Yes, I can also see in the dating situation where that can get you in trouble. Yeah, <laughs> you just um, sit and walk up to women and stare at them. Um, so that part of this world will be figured out very quickly. I've also met some new technologies that are amazing where when you grab a virtual object with nothing on your hand, no haptics, you can feel it huh? so that you can move things. How would you be able to feel it with nothing? Witchcraft is the short answer. Um, <laughs> they have a, a tablet that goes on your desk underneath that knows the distance that things are and can, can send an electric uh, oh, uh, okay. uh, response shock basically to you at low levels that simulate the, the feeling of, of, of objects. Wow. So all your... No comment on where that might go. Most of your major tech companies are spending massively in so the space. So does Google, Alphabet have a huge R&D for this, and Apple, and or do you think they're gonna be slow to it? They're all in it, they're all wonderful clients, um, and they're all putting the big building blocks in place, all right? Yeah, what is the time, as we wrap up, what is the time frame where you really see, like this is already, like you said, you can hold your tablet up, Amazon has recognition of you pointed at a book and it tells you, you know, where, how much it costs. So the, where does this thing get big? So the first augmented game, Pokemon Go, yes. made over a billion dollars profit. Oh, it was huge. And over a half a billion people have played it. Yes, it was massive. So the train left the station. Okay. But in terms of the glasses, where okay. do we see that? So they exist at a high price point today. And, and I'm, go I'm going to answer your question, but I'm going to give you a longer answer. About five, six years ago, when Google had the self-driving car, mm -hmm. it had hundreds of thousands of dollars of gear on its roof. Okay. Yes. All the sensors that it needed to make it work. And everybody in automotive pretty much just laughed at them. Why would you ever spend time on a, on a vehicle where you need two, three, four, five hundred thousand dollars of stuff on the roof. Today, all those sensors and all that processing, it's about fifty-six dollars. Yeah. Okay? Five years. Yeah. So the fact that you say right now these glasses are, are very expensive, they solve big problems for industry that we talked about, that it's worth it and for surgery and for doctors and all kinds of stuff. 
But the price point, if you look at Moore's Law, comes down half every year. Yes. So. That's why I talked about the 85 million pair that sold for over 100. We're yeah. talking between 100 and 200 dollars a pair within the next 24 months. Okay. If it's going to take you a year to figure out and build your business, okay. Yeah. So many people say, when's the best time to start a new business, yeah. like in augmented? And I always give the same answer. A year ago was the best time. Yeah. Second best time is now. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it's like when's the best time to plant a tree 20 years ago or today. Right. So. This is, I mean, there's so many different areas to, to, to play in, but so many of them require so much technical expertise and capital. Everybody's already done that for you. Yeah. When you made an app, you didn't have to figure out how to make a phone work and how to get phones to the world and how to have 3G and 4G and 5G and all that. You got to build on that and capture all that money. Yeah. This whole world's already being built. What piece of it would you like to own? Yeah. And it's most likely a piece that the big boys aren't focused on. Yeah, it's probably, anytime it's a trillion dollar industry, you can make millions and they won't even notice. Let me ask you this last question, final blitz question, so to speak. You talk about these four waves. Yes. Is the fifth wave, would you include cryptocurrency in this? So. And blockchain technology. So I'm huge on blockchain. I've, I've been in, in crypto for a long time, I've been giving speeches on it since 2014. Um, it's not a wave in the sense that it changes uh, life. It fundamentally changes our financial industry. I spoke at a major conference uh, of bankers, you can find the talk online, about a month ago. Mm -hmm. um, you have the six largest banks in the world have created their own crypto yep. just for overnight exchanges and yes. balancing. It's saving them billions of dollars and takes what was the three days to a two hour process to reconcile. So it's like co replacing commercial paper kind of thing, how Absolutely. banks are, yeah. Um, what's really impressive about this new space is it also will allow the two billion unbanked mm -hmm. to suddenly join the financial world. Yes. Meaning that everybody, and we don't have time for it today, everybody's phone becomes an ATM machine. Mm -hmm. So the remittances, expats of India sending money home to relatives spent $12 billion on fees last yeah, year. Yeah, Western Union, PayPal, all these fees. Yeah, massive. That all goes to zero. Yeah. So there's a company, Abra, out there right now yeah. that, that takes that down to zero. Yeah. So how money moves, how it's controlled, having a rational currency, I'm not going to predict which currency will win, and I don't speculate with advice, but that's a fundamental sea change yes. in how our financial services work. So capital will now be deployed in, in different ways and blockchain will allow who owns a piece of property when a government disappears or there's yep. a revolution. Uh, yeah, it's gonna disrupt real estate. Real estate. Uh, education. Education, the art world, paying royalties to artists. I mean, all yeah, kinds music, of things. It, yeah. uh, the challenge with it today is it's not as simple and as quick to complete a transaction yes. that it's something that you're going to do at retail. Yes. Now, that'll come. Yeah. But yeah, there's still keys and the train the trains left the station and, and opened the world to thinking of new ways of, of handling money and empowering people to have more control. But then I tie it back to this. What if instead of you getting a bill that says you were overdrawn on your thing or whatever? You're about to make a purchase in your glass to say your Netflix account was just dinged on your yeah. credit card. You will now be overdrawn on your account or this or that. You know That you now have a bot that talks to you, that yes. gives you financial advice, that your financial advisor is in the cloud. Now yeah. it could be from one of the big brands, could be from an individual, but we'll now have more control over our environment because our environment will conspire with us, yes. not against us to succeed. Yeah. And I'm very excited to watch what people create. You heard it here, tylopez.com slash disrupt. Go check out Jay's book, his website. He'll send you that workshop, uh, the workbook to help you do it, 40 page work. Uh, it's workbook. a workbook, right? Yeah. That's a whole kind of system. So I appreciate you coming again. Thanks, brother. That was awesome. And by the way, we're gonna come back in two years and when this thing's huge and people are like, I wish I got in, I would be like, we were talking about this in 2017, right at the end. That's awesome.
Thanks so much.